such a good job. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter to all of you. 
Thank you. Uh, we're going to follow order of service that's printed out in our service folder. All the words are in here. If you'd like to follow along in the hymnal, it also notes what hymn is being sung. And we'll begin with our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. <clears throat> Oh 
continue with the call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear people of God, I bring you good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise be to God the Father. He gives us new life and a sure hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Praise be to God the Son. He has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life. Because Jesus lives, we also shall live. Praise be to God the Holy Spirit. He works in our hearts and leads us to believe in Jesus as our Savior and testifies that we are God's children, heirs of eternal life. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one true God, the God of our salvation. Praise be to our triune God, who loves us with an everlasting love and gives us eternal life. Let everything that has breath praise the God of our salvation. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Rejoice, people of God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We continue with Christ the Lord is risen today. God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism, may walk in the newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of armies will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of aged wines, with the best cuts of meat, and with the finest wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that covers all peoples, the burial cloth stretched over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever. 
The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. He will take away the shame of his people throughout the earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Look, here is our God. We waited for him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue by singing Psalm 118. from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If our hope in Christ applies only to this life, we are the most pitiful people of all. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came by a man, the resurrection of the dead also is going to come by a man. For as in Adam they all die, so also in Christ they will all be made alive but each in his own order. Christ as the first fruits, and then Christ's people at his coming. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has done away with every other ruler and every other authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Death is the last enemy to be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. We continue with He is risen, He is risen. is from St. Mark chapter 16 beginning with verse 1. to the tomb for us. When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and hurried away from the tomb, trembling and perplexed. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We continue with Alleluia, Jesus lives.
peace be yours to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our consideration this Easter morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 and 20. It said this, If our hope in Christ applies only to this life, we are the most pitiful people of all. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So far, God's word. Your brothers and sisters of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Uncertainty. Uncertainty is the worst. Uncertainty brings upon us great stress, great anxiety. Uncertainty makes it hard to make plans. Uncertainty makes it so that the plans we do make have to be constantly changed. Uncertainty. It makes our minds spin. Uncertainty burdens us. Uncertainty makes us try to find a solution when there's no firm ground. Uncertainty is the worst. Uncertainty is something that we've been dealing with. This last year, we have been living through some very uncertain times. And over these past year, things kept changing. Things that we thought were certain no longer turned out to be certain. The things we thought were true were no longer true. Things kept changing. Nothing seemed the same. Everything seemed uncertain. And in so many ways, it still does. Things are uncertain. In such uncertain times, people need hope. People need to know that there's a solution to their answers, that there's a solution to what they're facing, to what they're experiencing. They need that. Right now, what do you think some people are hoping for on this Easter morning? Perhaps there are people that are, are hoping the virus will go away and everything will return to some sense of normal. Maybe others are, are hoping that they'll get a job soon. Maybe others are hoping that our nation will heal. We live in uncertain times. It's important to have hope. But the problem with the hope that the world has to offer, the problem with the hope that the world suggests, it's really nothing more than a wish, a dream, a what if. That's the kind of hope the world offers. There's nothing really to hold on to. And so it's really no hope at all. So, that's why it's so good that we're here this morning. That's why it's so good that we have gathered to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord of the dead. Because we remember that what happened outside of Jerusalem nearly 2,000 years ago when Jesus rose from the dead, that gives us a different kind of hope. That gives us a sure, a certain kind of hope. That's the hope we have today. The Bible, God's word, is full of promises. It's full of promises of what Jesus is doing. It's full of promises of what Jesus will do. Promises like, Jesus is always with us. Promises that no matter where we are, Jesus is there. The Bible contains promises that God knows our fears. He knows our worries. God's word holds the promise that Jesus has the power to protect us. <coughs> That Jesus has the power to provide for us. God's word tells us Jesus hears our prayers. God's word tells us Jesus loves us. But if, if there's still a cave outside of Jerusalem somewhere that's still holding the bones of Jesus, well, then those promises don't mean a thing. Then we can't trust those promises. Then we can't trust our God. But Jesus has risen. Those bones are not in a cave. He is alive. He is alive and well, and he is ruling over all things for us now. Jesus has been raised from the dead. And because of that, we can count on all of those promises that God gives us in his word. Every last one of them. That promise 
that Jesus is always with you. That's a promise you can count on without doubt. God cannot forsake us. God, God cannot leave us. He's with us. Always. That promise that Jesus knows our every fear, our every worry, whether it be about a virus, or about a job, or about the future of our country. He knows what we're facing. He knows what's in our hearts and in our minds. Jesus knows that. That promise that Jesus has the power to protect you, that Jesus has the power to provide for you, you don't have to be afraid of anything. Because Jesus has risen. God keeps his promises. That promise that Jesus hears all your prayers, every last one of them. And he answers them all. Sometimes the answer may be no. Sometimes the answer may be later. <clears throat> Sometimes the answer may be not this, but this. But this you can count on. However Jesus answers your prayer, it's always, always what is best for you. Always. And the promise that Jesus loves you. That's a promise you can count on. It's a promise that we can't even begin to imagine. It's a promise that motivated Jesus to go to the cross, to suffer hell, to be forsaken by his own Father in order to bring us forgiveness, in order to bring us peace between us and God, so that now we can call God Father, and he calls us his dear children. That's a promise you can count on because Jesus has risen. You see how those kind of promises are different than the hope that the world offers? Those dreams? Those wishes? We don't have to wish that God would love us or care for us or protect us or watch over us. He's promised He will. He's promised that He will keep all of his promises. We can count on that. That's a sure and certain promise. It's not something up for debate. We can count on it. But there is a day. There is a day when all of those promises that God has given us here for this life will not matter at all. There's a day when those promises will not matter mean anything to us. And that's the promise, and that's the day that we die. Those promises then about life on this earth really won't matter. Listen to what Paul says in talking about that. If our hope in Christ applies only to this life, we are the most pitiful people of all. Yes, we have a certain and sure hope now in this life. Christ will keep all of his promises. But there will come a day when we will leave this earth, when we will leave this world. And then what? Paul goes on, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And there it is. That's the greatest promise of all. That's the greatest promise you will ever be given. Think for a moment, if someone came to you today and promised that by the end of the week, COVID-19 would be gone, you would think, oh, great. Promise someone came to you and said, tomorrow when you wake up, you're going to have your dream job. Awesome. Someone came to you and promised, you will never have to worry about finances again. You will have all the financial resources you will ever need. Wow. Wonderful. But this promise that Jesus gives to us, this is the best promise of all. It beats every one of those promises. Nothing compares to it. Listen to it again. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In other words, 
Jesus is alive. He's alive and well, and he's ruling all things. But he is just the first. He has won for us forgiveness. He's won for us eternal life. So that means we too will live. We too will live in the glory of heaven for all eternity. That's the promise that cannot be beat. Talk about a sure and certain hope. This is it. So what that means is this life really can't hurt us. Yes, this life because of the brokenness of this world, because of sin, we have to contend with pain and disappointment and frustration and sorrows. But because of this promise, we know that this life on earth is only temporary. It will pass. So that means we have a whole new perspective on things, does it not? So as I'm facing the pains of this life, I know that it will pass. And that I will be welcomed into an eternal life where there will be no pain. That's priceless. I know that in this life, I may have to contend with sorrows and heartaches and tears. But there will come a time when those tears will be dried. And they will be dried forever. I will never, ever feel sorrow again when I'm welcomed into eternal life. That's the sure and certain hope that we now have. It sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Eternal life. Paradise, no pain, no sorrow, no troubles, no hardships, and all given to us as a free gift through faith in Christ. It's amazing. But it's ours. It's ours through faith. It's ours because Jesus was raised from the dead on this day, Easter morning. That is our sure and hope, certain hope. The world it just offers these wishes, these dreams, these what-ifs. But Easter, the Easter message gives us a sure and certain hope. Because Jesus is alive. And he's ruling all things on our behalf. Uncertainty is the worst. It's terrible to have to contend with it. If it's uncertainty about our health, about our wealth, about a virus, about a vaccine, about jobs, about relationships. It fills us with stress, it fills us with anxiety. We live in remarkably uncertain times. But isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to know that we don't have to rely on dreams and wishes? We can rely on something sure, something certain. Jesus is alive. Jesus is ruling all things on behalf of us whom he loves. That is a sure and certain hope, now and for hereafter, in eternity. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, He is a Risen Glorious Word.
rise for prayer. We join together in reading responsibly the prayer of the church. Almighty and merciful God, on this glorious day, we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase our faith that the grace of the empty tomb may fill our lives and make us glad each day. When we are weak, be our strength. When we are sad, be our song. And when we sin, be our salvation. Remove the disgrace of death from all who mourn. In moments of grief, call believers through the voice of our Good Shepherd and embolden us to follow his promises. In their hopelessness of despair, turn their faithless faith to trust in the only way, truth, and life. Wipe away the tears born of death and give new birth to a living hope in the hearts of the lost and troubled. Use our witness as compassion and comfort for others in need of mercy. King of kings and Lord of lords, destroy all dominion, authority, and power that stands against you, whether seen or unseen, whatever evil exerts itself against your saving will, false teaching or lukewarm faith, Satan's lies or worldly pleasures, empty worship or futile religion, rule it for the sake of the gospel's free course. Triumph over our enemies and empower the church to fight the good fight to the end. Never leave us or forsake us. Walk among our churches, O living one, as the faithful witness and firstborn from the dead. As your angel sent women with the news of the risen Christ, call women in our churches to announce he is risen. As you sent your disciples with the power of the Spirit, use all of us to share with a broken and dying world the news of your eternal victory. Empower us to seek your truth and love to our circles of friends, relatives, and neighbors. Bless our efforts to help others understand and believe the victory of Easter. Heavenly Father, keep the baptized united with your Son in his resurrection. Put to death the fleshly urges of those caught in addictions. Clothe in your righteousness anyone ashamed of good intentions which have fallen short. And assure those searching for purpose that their eternal identity as your dear children is sealed. Thank you for the power of baptism working in our lives and for the certainty of its promises through the resurrection. Enrich us with everything we need for life and godliness. O Lord of life, you have done mighty things for us. We pray through him who is the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ our Lord. His name is above every name, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks. <clears throat>
Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service, and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn for this morning is, I Know My Redeemer Lives. And in between verses 7 and 8, there's going to be a little musical interlude. We'll rise during that time, and then we'll conclude with uh, verse 8. Welcome to all our guests and visitors. Certainly glad to have you with us here today. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped get everything ready for today. We really appreciate it. Our choir, our musicians, everyone who got everything, the flowers together, all of that. Thank you very much. Um, just a couple of things. Not this coming Tuesday, but a week from Tuesday, we're going to have a little, uh, we're going to watch a video of a missionary who is from Syria. It's very interesting. I have watched it already. But we're going to have Ruben Soup and fresh bread by the Benzers and the Bakis before, and they sort of need to know who might come to that. So it's Ruben soup, I believe. I think 
that's well liked here in the congregation. So, uh, so that's at six, and then we're going to follow it with that watching that video. So that's a week from Tuesday, but we need you to sign up if that's something you're interested in attending. Also, for those of you who donated flowers for today, if you'd like to, to take one home with you today, that's certainly fine. So um, that's something you may, may do. And also, uh, this last Friday was someone's birthday. Mr. Hoffman, Mr. Mark Hoffman had his birthday. So we want to say happy birthday to you. So happy birthday to Mark. Please sing with me. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings, God's peace be with you. He is risen. He is risen indeed.